My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I'll do and make friends. I'm just trying to save you a little bit of money. My job, educate, teach, put into context. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me at Jim Kramer. What a run we've had. Almost too good to be true. Even as it fizzled today, Dow ultimately finished down 109 points, while the S&P dipped 0.37%, and the Nasdaq lost 0.68%. It started out looking an OK day, and then got ugly at the close. Strangely, though, perhaps because cash is paying you so much, perhaps because the Fed does nothing but scare us constantly, there's still plenty of money on the sidelines that might come into the stock market. Why does it matter? Because if we finally get the long-awaited sell-off, then a lot of people feel will happen, including me. After five straight weeks of gains, it would make a lot of sense. It probably won't be all that devastating because I believe people are beginning to sense that stocks can give you a better return than short-term bonds, even if they are a lot riskier. So the next decline, and I expect that will, will happen, will be a bullish decline. Yes, a buying opportunity. Hey, is it too complacent to say buy the dip? You've heard that for years. You know what? I actually don't think so. See, the market's currently overbought, meaning there's been too much concentrated buying, and we've come up a little far, a little too fast, okay? That's why we've been letting some stock go for the charitable trust. And trust, and you would see so, what we're so, doing so, so, if, you, so. if you just became a member of the CBC Investing Club. So I'm certainly not pounding the table right now, not right here. Why not wait for a pullback at this point? I mean, isn't that the right move? We're not putting any money back into this market unless we get severe price breaks for the stocks of companies we like or for the market as a whole. But I know many people are itching to get into the market at all costs. I think that's wrong. I think it's just a mistake to be that desperate. To them, all I can say is at this point, after the runs we've seen, especially in technology, I think it's going to be worth your while to wait for a price break before you pull the trigger. There are enough high-quality stocks that can still go down big in a benign environment, like the health insurers this week, more on that later, the same doctors last week. So I am sure you're going to get your chance to buy something good on weakness. So why not wait? Why not be patient? That, the people who are patient and let it come down are the ones who are going to make the most money here. Will that opportunity come in one of my favorite areas? Aerospace? We're closed here on Monday for Juneteenth, now a federal holiday. But in France, they're holding the annual Paris Air Show, where aerospace companies from across the world tell us how they're doing. So we'll have to pay close attention to Raytheon Technologies. This one includes the old Raytheon and the aerospace business of the old United Technologies. I bet it's doing very well thanks to the endless demand from worldwide travel post-pandemic. You know, the airlines worldwide almost all need new planes. And, well, there you go. I think we can get the same exact thing the next day from General Electric because of their aerospace business, also on display at the Paris Air Show. That stock has been a tremendous form. You know, the, do you know that she's been the seventh best performer in the S&P 500 so far, so far this year? As CEO Larry Culp has finally really turned things around. No one denies that anymore. Giant backlog here. Pretty incredible. After the close Tuesday, we're going to hear from what I consider to be one of the most exciting situations in the entire market, and that's FedEx. I bet Raj Subramanian, He's the relatively new CEO. We'll talk about the cost takeout at the same time as business getting a tad better because there's been a nice increase in e-commerce over the past few months in this country. Can he raise numbers? Well, that may be a stretch, but he's doing an amazing job. It's the cost side that it will be most evident from. Oh, and be sure to watch Mad Money as we're going to be coming to you from the, direct from the Motor City where we'll be spending the day with Jim Farley, the explosive I think terrific CEO of Ford. I like the stock very much, but it has been straight up ever since Farley announced that team up with, yes, Elon Musk uh, for Tesla charging stations. I can't wait to get into the Ford race with Farley. Uh, as he is a proven winner in business and on the racetrack, I might actually do some driving. That could shock everyone, especially my wife. On Wednesday, we also got an analyst meeting that could be very problematic. And that's Dollar Tree, which recently reported one of the worst quarters of the year. Now, maybe they can straighten people out and give us a value proposition to explain why the stock should be bought and not sold. This was the premier dollar store chain for years. I believe it can make a comeback, but I'm not going to feel confident until I hear a real plan of action, a real one this time, that can make this thing start going back up. And I know we definitely don't have it yet. I know we just had the Fed meeting and went through all that rigmarole, but Jay Powell... 
has now got to spend two days being grilled on the Hill, first by the House and then by the Senate about the economy. I hope he's asked about how to bring down the cost of housing, as that's responsible for most of the inflation that we've got right now. And there's got to be a better plan than destroying the entire economy just to get cheaper rent. More on that near the end of the show. Hey, speaking of the housing shortage, how much are the home builders making? Let's listen to what KB Homes says when it reports Wednesday at the close. Maybe KB has some solutions for how prices for homes can come down. Lenar shocked us with a tremendous number early, uh, early this week, and I bet KB actually does the same. Lots of people got excited about this week's IPO of Kava, the Mediterranean-themed restaurant chain. It started off with a real bang, a double from where the deal was priced on just the first day of trading. That's going to get a lot of people thinking about coming public. So on Thursday, when we hear from Darden, parent of Olive Garden, will it make us feel similarly good about its business? I think it might. The stock's been very strong. People are spending an inordinate amount of their money dining out still. Not long ago, we flagged a company called Sam Sarah, which makes software to help manage physical assets. I predicted that they would say good things at their upcoming analyst meeting. Well, bingo, here's the analyst meeting. Let's see if they tell a good story. I believe we'll also be excited by what we hear from MongoDB. That's another high-quality enterprise software company. It's one that's putting up some of the best numbers in the entire sector. MongoDB is a popular developer data platform. Remember, this is enterprise software, not the kind of software you and I buy, that allows you to build applications at scale. I know it's loved by coders worldwide, although the 100-point gain in less than three weeks might steal some of the thunder from that analyst meeting. Next, Elliott Management, one of some of the smartest guys in the investing business, recently took a big position in NRG. That's a huge utility, and it believes that utility is underperforming. Do you know that this is the second time around for Elliott? Second time they've gotten involved with this one. It helped bring about some really positive changes eight dozen years ago. But now the firm's unhappy. They think things have lapsed back into uh, lassitude, negativity. I wonder if NRG can offer defense to its critics when it holds that investor meeting. Maybe? I don't know. I think Elliott's once changed. I don't blame him. Finally, on Friday, CarMax reports. And it wouldn't surprise me if they say that used car prices have come down substantially. They were a big part of the problem when we saw the CPI this week. I expect used car sales to begin a long decline down. But you know what? That's great for CarMax. They make more money when that happens. Could be an interesting buy. And we have one more analyst meeting that I think is going to be terrific has been most of the time. There were two times when they didn't guide up, but Dexcom will be talking. They make the best diabetes monitoring systems. I think that business is incredibly good. Remember, I like the medical device business all across the board. I think they raise numbers. Bottom line, when I say the market gives you chances to get in, I'm reminded of how there are violent moves constantly happening, and that's when you act. Like the T-Mobile one we had now, Caterpillar down to 206, or this week, Humana and United Health. And I'll have a ton to say about them later in the show. The pattern's simple. Emotional horror show followed by rational buying, which remains a very good setup indeed. Tamar in Oregon. Tamar. Hey, wow. Hello? It's so, uh, such Tamar? an honor to be talking to the voice of intelligence on Wall Street. Tamar? Yes. Hmm. I can't yes. hear Tamar. Tamar, speak up a little and I got gotcha. you. Go ahead. Uh, hello, it's such an honor to be talking to the voice of intelligence on Wall Street. Oh, you're very kind. You're very kind. I'm sure trying. Some of these weeks are pretty hard. What's going on? Well, I just wanted to get your take on uh, Campbell's Soup Company uh, being around a 52-week low like it is now. Um, and well, let's have a talk about this. Mark Klaus, yeah. Mark Klaus did a terrific job on the snack side. But on the meal side, it was not good. And he so much has said so on air. I think that they were going to start annualizing some decent comparisons, as we call it. The stock yields three. Mark's terrific. If you can get that stock at, let's say, $45, $44 and willing to put it away, I think it'll fix the meals business and you'll feel very good about the situation. The stock is down 18%. That's often an opportunity for such a high-quality name. Rajesh in Connecticut. Rajesh. Hi, Jim. Rajesh uh, from Connecticut. And thank you. Thank you again uh, for all your addresses. Really happy uh, to be You're, talking, you're very kind. You know, very kind callers. Go ahead. How can I help? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a long-time listener, and I have learned a lot from your show. Thank you. Thank, thank you for that. And I have an industrial sector stock today, which is having a 22P, and it has a good, impressive buyback and dividend yield uh, for the last couple of decades. And what's your opinion about uh, TSU tractor supply? Is it 
right time to add some more. You know, so I was just reading, I just read a, a very interesting, I, I read a very interesting Q&A with, uh, with Hal Lawton, who's the CEO, who's terrific. And I came away thinking that the long-term trend is very clear. People are still moving to the sub, to the suburbs and the country. They're fixing the place up. It is really a play on feeds on feed. And they sell more feed than anybody. I like tractor supply down here, way down below its 52-week high. I, it is a wild trader, but I think tractor supply is very, very good. David in Massachusetts. David. Mr. Kramer, thanks for your time. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Oh, I appreciate you calling, question, David. My question is about Bank of America. I watch sure. your network all the time. I see Mr. Monahan. I see Mike Mayo on it a lot. They love Bank of America. But one thing that always gets me, they never talk about Merrill Lynch. It's like they forgot about it. The bull's hiding. No advertising. It's never mentioned. I guess uh, you know what? I agree with you. I, I, and I want to bring that up with Brian because I grew up in a year where that is the b absolute best, best, quali highest quality name. The problem is the banks are not being bought by anyone. A 3% yield, not enough. People worry about bank examiners, worry about credit, worry about the Fed. Which means that if they mention it or not, Bank of America is going to stay cheap. And I don't want something to stay cheap, of course. I want a stock that goes higher. And right now, it's a very tough stock, though. Now, I know people are itching to do some buying. I absolutely get that. But I say no. I want you to wait for your favorites to come in and then pull the trigger. But not before then. Maybe we miss a few points. I'm willing to accept that. Mad Money tonight. Domino's is looking fresh after a pair of positive analyst notes that help the stock catch fire. Analysts are moving stocks again. So where do I come down on the story? I'll give you my take. Then the market has been worrying this week, but I don't want you to get complacent about it. You never know when the next shoe is going to drop, and I think it could be relatively soon. And that's why tonight, and remember, I've been a big bull, right? So that's why we play MI Diversified, to see if the portfolios of Cream America can withstand whatever the market throws at them. And then, Really major development I alluded to in the healthcare space that I think is too big for us to ignore. I'll reveal what it is and what you should do about the selling pressure. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.